Welcome to lesson 1.3. I'm CPA Paul Gaido. In this lesson, we are going to learn about accounting standards, accounting principles, accounting basis, and accounting policies. Kindly remember to subscribe to this channel, Traitors of Accounting Information Systems. In this lesson's objective, we are going to cover accounting standards and the accounting standard setting boards. The generally accepted accounting principles, including accounting concepts and accounting conventions. We are also going to cover accounting basis and finally cover the accounting policies. Accounting standards. An accounting standard is a common set of generally accepted principles, rules, guidelines, and procedures that define the basis for financial accounting policies and practices in order to improve the level of transparency in financial reporting. Accounting standards specify how a financial transaction or other monetary event should be recognized, measured, presented, and disclosed in order to provide financial information that is useful in decision making. The basic constraints of most of the accounting standards are objectivity, materiality, consistency, prudence, and sincerity. Objectivity provides for the independence of the auditor and the verifiability of the financial information. Materiality is the completeness of the information included in the financial reports and how valuable that information is in decision making. Consistency provides that the same accounting policy and methods should be used from one year to another. An entity should be prudent by adopting a method that minimizes the possibility of overstating either the asset or the profits. And sincerity ensures reporting of impartial financial performance and presentation of true and fair view in financial position. Some of the global accounting standard setting bodies are International Accounting Standard Board, International Public Sector Accounting Standard Board, and Financial Accounting Standard Board. The International Accounting Standard Board has developed international accounting standards and international financial reporting standards. The International Public Sector Accounting Standard Board has developed international public sector accounting standards for cash basis and accrual basis methods. Lastly, the Financial Accounting Standard Board has developed generally accepted accounting principles in the United States. In Kenya, the accounting framework consists of examination board, professional associations, and regulatory boards. The examination board for certified public accountants in Kenya is Kenya Accountants and Secretaries National Examination Board, that is CASNEB. The accountants professional associations in Kenya are Institute of Certified Public Accountants of Kenya, ISPAC, and Association of Women Accountants in Kenya, AWAC. The regulatory boards for accounting are Institute of Certified Public Accountants of Kenya and Public Sector Accounting Standard Board of Kenya. The generally accepted accounting principles are the basic rules and guidelines that are internationally adopted for recording and reporting financial transactions. They comprise of the accounting concepts and the accounting conventions. Accounting concepts are the basic assumptions and conditions underlying accounting and preparation of financial report for an entity. On the other hand, accounting conventions are the customs and traditions that are followed as guidelines in preparation of financial statements. We are going to cover nine basic assumptions in accounting, that is, separate entity concept, money measurement concept, going concern concept, accounting period concept, matching concept, duality aspect concept, revenue recognition concept, objective evidence concept, substance over form concept. Separate entity concept. In this concept, an entity is treated as separate and distinct economic entity from its owners or managers irrespective of the legal or liability status. This means the financial affairs of the entity are recorded and reported separately from those of the owners or managers irrespective of whether legally it is considered as separate or one. 
money measurement concept. An entity's transaction is deemed to be an accounting transaction if and only if it can be reliably measured and presented in monetary value. In money measurement concept, it is assumed that not all business transactions are accounting transactions. There are so many business transactions that do not have monetary value. Such business transactions include experienced employee, business location, broad patent rights and copyrights, organization knowledge, policies and procedure manuals, and research and publications. The third accounting concept is going concern concept. Going concern concept assumes that an entity will continue in operation for a foreseeable indefinite future. An entity should prepare its financial statement on a going concern basis unless the management either intends to liquidate the entity or knows that there is no other realistic way other than doing so. Going concern is the basis for classifying expenditure as either capital expenditure or revenue expenditure. Some of the things that may be considered as having a negative effect on the going concern of an entity are operation of a law illegalizing the entity's activity, depletion of a mineral resource used as raw material, catastrophic event affecting the entity's operation, withdraw of or auction by a major financier, over-reliance on a single supplier, and finally over-reliance on a single customer. The fourth accounting concept is accounting period concept, also known as periodicity concept. Periodicity concept states that all financial statements and financial reports are prepared on a periodic basis, that is, either for a specific period or as at a particular time. Accounting period, also known as financial period or physical period, is a period of time covered by a regular financial report of an entity. An accounting period is normally a year, that is 12 months or 52 weeks or 365 days. The accounting period may not necessarily be a calendar year. The accounting period can be broken down into small equal period such as on a quarterly basis, monthly basis, or by annually. International financial reporting standard requires that when an accounting period is shorter or longer than a year, the entity should disclose the period covered by the financial statements, the reason for using a longer or shorter period, and the fact that the comparative amount for the financial statement are not entirely comparable. The fifth Accounting concept is revenue realization concept, also known as revenue recognition concept. Revenue is an inflow of economic resource arising from sale of goods, provision of services, and or rendering of works by an accounting entity. Revenue realization concept states that revenue is recognized in the period it is earned regardless of when cash is actually received. Revenue is recognized when both seller and buyer have done something to demonstrate the transfer of risk and reward. The conditions for recognizing revenue are the risk and rewards of ownership of goods, services, or works have been transferred from the seller to the buyer. The seller loses control over the goods, services, or works. The collection of money from the buyer is reasonably assured. The amount of money receivable can be reasonably measured and the cost of revenue can be reasonably measured. IFRS 15 provides a five-step model framework for recognizing revenue. That is, the first step, you identify the contract with a customer. The second step is you identify the performance obligation in the contract. The third step is you determine the transaction price. The fourth step is you allocate the transaction price to the performance obligation in the contract. And lastly, you recognize revenue when or as the entity satisfies a performance obligation. The sixth accounting concept is matching concept. Matching concept requires that all expenses incurred in generating revenue be recognized in the same period when revenue is recognized. 
To avoid overstating or understating of profit, expenses are recognized in the same period with the revenue that they generate. The seventh accounting concept is duality aspect concept. In duality aspect concept, every accounting transaction has twofold effect in the accounts, which are equal and opposite, that is, a debit and a credit. Duality aspect is the basis for double entry bookkeeping, trial balance, as well as the balance sheet. The eighth accounting concept is objective evidence concept. Objective evidence concept means that every financial transaction should be supported by a properly documented evidence that is prepared before the transaction is effected. Therefore, all financial transactions must have a source document as a supporting evidence. The last accounting concept we are going to consider is substance over form. Accounting transaction and events are recorded for and presented based on their substance and economic reality but not merely on the legal form. Where right of enjoyment and responsibility of a liability for an asset is substantially on the entity, the entity should account for such an asset irrespective of whom the legal owner is. Substance over form is normally applicable in accounting for higher purchase transactions and leasehold property. In higher purchase, an asset is accounted for by the buyer even if it is still legally owned by the seller. On leasehold property, an asset is accounted for by the lessee even if legally it is still owned by the lessor. Accounting conventions Accounting conventions are customs and traditions that are followed as guidelines in preparation of financial statements. We are going to cover seven accounting conventions, that is, historical cost convention, conservatism convention, also known as prudence, convention of consistency, convention of materiality and aggregation, convention of comparative information, convention of food disclosure, and convention of offsetting. Historical Cost Convention In Historical Cost Convention, assets are recorded and accounted for at their original cost of acquisition even though the market value may have changed. This may lead to challenges when there is significant change in assets value due to either inflation or obsolescence. These challenges are however overcome by revaluation and impairment of asset in case of significant changes in value. Conservatism Convention, also known as prudence, provides that the entity should minimize the possibility of overstating its assets. The entity should as well report the lowest possible profit or in case of a loss, the highest possible losses. The entity should adopt a safe policy for accounting that does not anticipate profit and considers all expected losses. The entity should neither overestimate revenues or underestimate expenses. Conservatism is realized through prudent valuation of inventory, making provisions, recognizing of contingent liabilities, ignoring contingent assets, and deferring unrealized incomes. Inventory should always be valued as the lower of cost and net realizable value. An entity should make provision for depreciation of asset, amortization of intangible asset, impairment of asset, provision for bad and doubtful debts, and or provision for obsolete inventory where and as applicable. The entity should also make provision for contingent liabilities that may arise due to compensation in case of a loss of a court case, redemption of royalty points, warranty compensation, and accounting for unutilized leave days. An accounting entity should not recognize any asset or income that is paid on a future uncertain event or outcome that are not entirely within the control of the entity, such as anticipated win in a court case. Deferring unrealized revenue means where an entity receives cash from customers for goods that is yet to deliver, services that is yet to provide, or works that is yet to render, that revenue should be deferred until such a time when the entity will have fulfilled its performance obligation. Similarly, where the entity has earned revenue, 
but receiving of it is in doubtful, like interest charge on non-performing loans by financial institutions, the entity should also defer such revenue until such a time it is able to receive it. The third accounting convention is convention of consistency. Consistency convention provides that when an entity adopts a method or policy in accounting, it should consistently be applied from one accounting period to another. It also provides that each rule, concept, principle, and policy adopted by an entity must be observed and applied every year. Consistency convention makes it possible for comparison of financial statements of different accounting periods. Therefore, any changes to the methods applied should be justified and the entity must disclose the nature of changes, the reason for the changes, and the effect of those changes to the financial statements. The fourth accounting convention is materiality and aggregation convention. Materiality is how significant certain fact or data is in decision making by a reasonable user, and whether inclusion or omission of it within the financial statement will have consequences in the evaluation of past, present, and future events. The most important thing in materiality is to provide information that is sufficient for the user to make correct decisions. Materiality depends on the size, nature, and relevance of the information. It determines the extent of information to be presented on the notes to the financial statements. Materiality also determines the level of aggregation of information in the financial statements. The fifth accounting convention is Convention of Comparative Information. An entity should prepare comparative information for its current accounting period and its immediate previous accounting period in its financial statements. Other comparative information that an entity may prepare includes comparison against target and budget, comparison from one accounting period to another, comparison against other entities in the same industry. Comparative analysis of financial reports can either be done through horizontal comparison or vertical comparison. Horizontal comparative analysis is a review of entities' financial reports over multiple financial periods. It can be used to show financial growth pattern of an entity over the selected periods. The challenges of horizontal comparative analysis is that it may be used longer to depict current financial period as better than other periods, especially when a base year with poor performance is chosen. On the other hand, Vertical comparative analysis is a review of an entity's financial reports in which a line item within the same financial period is taken as the base item. Other items are measured in percentage against the baseline item. For instance, revenue can be used as a baseline item, then operating expenses be measured as a percentage of revenue. Vertical comparison makes it easy to compare the financial statement of an entity with other entities in the same industry. The sixth accounting convention is the Convention of Full Disclosure. An entity is required to report all necessary information about financial statements that is relevant to any person who is accustomed to reading them. It should report any significant information that is likely to affect the decision of the users of the financial statements. The disclosure should include the post balance sheet events that are likely to affect their decisions. The supplemental information gives more insight to the information that is available in the financial statements. The supplemental information is disclosed in various ways such as disclosure notes to the financial statements, parenthetical comments, and supplemental financial statements. Financial statements of an entity are required to disclose the accounting standards adopted, significant accounting policies applied, principal objective and location of the entity, related parties' transaction, shareholders with significant holding, any reliance on significant supplier, any reliance on significant customer, any reliance on significant material, provisions and contingencies, financial and statistical ratios. The last accounting convention is offsetting convention. An entity should not offset 
assets and liabilities unless required or permitted by the accounting standard adopted by the entity. Also, it should not offset incomes and expenses unless required or permitted by the accounting standards. Some of the accounting transactions that are permitted for offsetting by the accounting standards are gain or loss on disposal of assets, provisions for bad and doubtful debts, provisions for damaged and obsolete inventory, and provision for contingent liabilities. Accounting basis. Accounting basis are the methodology under which an accounting transaction is recognized, measured, presented, and disclosed. Examples of accounting basis are in revenue recognition methods, there is cash basis and accrual basis. In depreciation methods, there is trade line method, reducing balance method, and unit of production. In inventory variation methods, there is first in first out, FIFO method, last in last out, LIFO method, simple average method, and weighted average method. Lastly, in amortization of intangible asset, there is straight line method, double declining balance method or accelerated method, and sum of year basis method. Accrual basis method provides that revenue is recognized when it is earned and not when cash is received. It also provides that expenses are accounted for when the transaction is incurred and not when cash is paid. On the other hand, cash basis method provides that revenue is recognized only when cash is received. It also provides that expenses are only recorded when cash is paid out. Accounting policies. Accounting policies are the specific accounting basis considered by an entity as the most appropriate in its circumstances and adopted by it for the purpose of bookkeeping and preparation of the financial reports. The table shows a sample depreciation policy for an entity. For instance, property and buildings may be depreciated at a rate of 2.5% per annum at the street train method. Motor vehicles may be depreciated at a rate of 20% per annum at the reducing balance method. Computers and accessories may be depreciated for five years at the sum of year digits. Plant and machinery may be depreciated at a rate of five shillings per unit at a unit of production. Computer softwares may be depreciated at a rate of 30% at a double declining balance method. Thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe our channel, Treatise of Accounting Information Systems. Like this video, leave a comment and share with others.